Hi, and welcome to Mike McMillan's Info Product Earnings YouTube channel. Hey, it's Mike again, and I just want to take a second to show you what we'll be learning in our video here today so you know what's coming up. So, what will you learn? We'll learn about bringing in text to your videos, manipulating that text, how to make cover graphics like this for your videos. We'll learn how to use special effects like this, and a cool thing to do is to make a screencast and have you showing in front of that screencast and talking while it's playing. How to bring in images and videos and use transitions to cue them up just like this. And we'll learn about green screen effects, which can be very, very useful. And just like right here, you can bring in any kind of image behind yourself as you're talking in your video. And like right here, this is what I call a mini me effect, okay? And uh, you can bring in a short uh, clip of yourself put it in the corner and bring in text. We'll talk about all these things and turn you into a ScreenFlow 8 hero. Okay, so I've got a really cool 15-page ebook I put together for you. I cover all of these topics. It's completely free. Let me just give you an example. One page has all 33 time codes, all 33 topics I cover in this video. So a week from now, if you forgot how to do this thing with your iPhone, just look it up on that page. It says at 45 minutes, 53 seconds, that's where he covers it. Play this video again, go to that point, and it'll show you how to do that particular item. Okay, it's Mike, and I'm back. Uh, let's get started. Now, a couple things I want to show you that I do before I start recording or editing or anything. Um, let me show you how to get this screen to pop up here. Once you open ScreenFlow, it'll say ScreenFlow up here at the top, and I just come down to Preferences right here. And one of the preferences, when you open up ScreenFlow for the first time, you're going to have this black theme show up where everything is dark gray or black and then the icon show up in white. That's kind of spooky looking to me. <laughs> Maybe I'm a scaredy cat. But uh, I like to go with the light thing, the light interface uh, option. Then everything shows up in white and the icons and everything are in black. It, it, it's easier to work with, I believe. Okay, you don't have to do that, but once you get set there, then you can come into um, ScreenFlow right here, and what you want to do is click on File, go to New, and this page will pop up, and here it just tells you've got ScreenFlow 8, click on New Recording, Color LCD just means that that's your Mac monitor, it will record whatever shows up on your screen. Uh, if you're doing a screencast, okay? And then down here it says Blue Snowball. Now yours is going to say Internal Microphone. It's going to record off the mic inside your Mac. But if you plug in any kind of external um, recording option, like I'm using a Blue Snowball mic today. So as soon as you plug that into your computer, it'll show up here and you can click on Blue Snowball or whatever your microphone is. You don't have to have an external mic, but you get better sound, okay? So uh, that's what this looks like. And then you can come down to New Document and see where it says 1280 by 720. That's the perfect size to fit into the YouTube player. Uh, if you have a different size that's not in a 16 by 9 format, you're going to have black bars that show at the top and the sides of your video, and you don't want that. I always choose 30 frames per second. That'll work really well for you. Um, and then you're all set. Then you can come down here, click on this little icon right here, and then once you do that, you'll have this screen. Now, I'm not going to click on it because I'm already recording right now. Okay, but once you do that, the screen will pop up. Here's your work area. These are all the tools over here that you can use with ScreenFlow, all the things it can do. Here's your timeline, and here's your scrubber bar. Now, I can't scrub because uh, I don't have anything in there yet. Okay, Okay, and just one more quickie. This is the way your interface on ScreenFlow is going to look when you get ready to do something. You're going to have a black work area. Um, me, I prefer to go down here and use this cropping tool. Notice it says 1280 by 720 pixels. That's the size I set it up. But right here, if you click on this box, you can make your background area any color you'd like. I like to use a white background layer, and I'll show you why later. But you don't have to do that. You can go with the black, but I like to do that and click on this check mark and it sets it for you and you're good to go. But that's what I do before I start playing around with ScreenFlow. I get all those settings right. Okay, good. Okay, the two main uses of ScreenFlow are making screencasts and video editing and I'll show you both 
Right now, let's make a screencast. Okay, well, let's do a screencast. Okay, so I'm in ScreenFlow and I've opened up a new document. Just uh, showed you how to do this earlier, so we've got a document to work with. Um, and uh, so what I would do if I wanted to do a screencast is I would come in here and I need to tell ScreenFlow to start recording whatever's on my screen. Okay, two ways you can do that. You can hit Command Shift 2, okay, and that'll start recording. And then when you're done with your recording, hit Command Shift 2 again, that'll end your recording. Okay, the other thing you can do that I probably do is click on any place on your desktop. You've got to get out of screen flow and see right here this camera. You could come in here and I'm recording right now, so that's why there's a dot in the middle of the camera. Um, but um, you could come in and this would say start recording. You could start your recording and then you could come back later and stop your recording or pause it. Go get a cup of coffee, have lunch, whatever, and then you can come back and unpause it and it'll take up right where you left off. Okay, <clears throat> again, I'm recording right now. So I'm going to minimize this just to get it out of the way and I'm, you'd be recording at this point. Um, and then right here this is an ebook that i created uh, a few years back and i used a thing called swift publisher okay and suppose that i wanted to make a youtube video and show people how to use swift publishers to swift publisher to create their ebooks so right now you'd be recording everything on your screen will be recorded your mouse movements everything you do will be recorded so i could come in and make a video and say um hey you know so to work with swift publisher you can highlight any text block and i could say you could change the color up here to you know to black to red whatever you want and then when i get done i could again come up i could hit command shift 2 that would stop it or i could come up here and click on this and go to stop record and uh I'm going to do that right now and I'll show you what happens as soon as you stop recording. Okay, so once you've stopped your recording, then um, as soon as you stop it, this dialog box will open up and it will say, you know, create a new document or add it to an already created document. You'll click on uh, create a new document and just click on OK. All right, and as soon as you do that, then your page will pop up. Um, in ScreenFlow and you should come down to file and go to save and that will save your document. Now you've got it. Okay, it's saved. Um, it's not a movie file, it's a ScreenFlow document. So the next thing is once you click on save, then it's going to come in and ask you to save it as what? You could call it, you know, Jim's Great Video. Whatever you want to name your video, that's fine. Okay, and you can save it on your desktop, or there are different choices, but I save it on my desktop. And then once you do that, <clears throat> you can come in, and you have a couple choices. You could go to File, Publish To, and go down to Vimeo, let's say YouTube, it's going to be a YouTube video. Um, go to YouTube, it'll ask you to log into YouTube, and you'll be able to upload your video file right to YouTube and add some tags, add your description, your title, all that stuff. Makes it very easy to do. Now, your other choice would be to come in here and go to Export. And if you go to Export, what will happen is it will export this screencast as an MP4 file, as a video file and it'll export it to your desktop and then from there you could upload it to YouTube okay so that's how this process works now there's one thing that you always want to check before you go in and save your document or you export it or do anything with it once you've made a screencast you want to come in and don't worry about this stuff up here the video part this is just a clip from earlier in the video don't worry about that I'm gonna come up here and raise my scrubber bar right up here okay now <clears throat> let's look at this in this particular clip um, if I scrub through this this is my audio file my waveform for my audio this is the audio for the recording this is the video you can see right there you can move them into different locations but okay now, I want to play this. Now, listen very carefully, okay? And as you listen, try to keep your eye over here on the recording levels. You want to have your recording levels someplace in the middle area here. And one thing you can do is I always, when I record, I put my microphone 
uh, way over to the right. If you're way down here, you're not going to get much volume. I keep it someplace, you know, over here. Okay. Now watch what happens. Okay, ready? That'll work really well. For Look at. Um, and there. Did you see that red come up right here? Let's do it again. Um, and see the red? That means you're peaking. Your audio level is peaking. It's too high to be picked up by the device. And you can see what happened is right here. See this peak right here? As I move my scrubber bar over, see that pink that came up right there? What happened? I don't know what I did, but I smacked my lips or I clicked my tongue or something happened and it made this click. You don't want that to happen. Uh, like if you upload videos to YouTube or something and you've got peaks in here that need to be clipped, YouTube hates that. And the sound quality is not going to be good. So there are two things you could do. Okay, one is you could come in here and click on your waveform on your audio part of this and you could come up here and click on the volume and then you can make the volume go way down low and see if I make it low enough then this doesn't peak anymore and then you're all set. okay there's still the click in there and but it doesn't peak, uh, peak the pink doesn't show up over here okay so the problem is now I've reduced the volume on this whole clip and it's not loud enough so what I want to do what I would recommend doing is coming in here okay now it's gonna peak again and see that I would move my scrubber bar right before this peak and if you hit T on your keyboard it splits the clip that you have highlighted okay and then I'll come over to the other side and I'll highlight this part of the clip hit T again and now right here if I hit delete it just takes that click right out of there so now when this plays watch you won't see it you won't hear the click um, and, and there's no that, pink over there okay so sometimes when you talk and you go hey this is cool wow this is really cool you know something like that you're gonna have peaks in there and you're either gonna have to cut them out or reduce you know the volume in that area um, so that's how you can do that and just remember you can always split audio clips and or video clips um, like in this video part right here let me move it over here I can move my scrubber bar right there I can hit T and then I can split that apart and I could put another video clip in here or an audio file or whatever you want to do but you can always split clips just like that okay um, so that's how you can prevent audio clipping from occurring okay good okay now this next part is fun it's interesting and uh, you can do a lot with this but it's extremely important okay so let's do this let me open up this image right here we're going to talk about creating thumbnail images for your video these are images that show at the start of your video play um, to grab attention and focus people on what your video is all about now this is a good one most good thumbnail images have big graphic titles and lettering and an image over here, uh, maybe your face. Um, I bought this image, I'll show you where in just a second. Um, but this is an example of a great thumbnail image. So let me just show you, um, let's come down here. I went to YouTube, did graphic design search. These are all about graphic design. Yes, the title is important. Yes, the description is important. But the first thing people look at is the cover graphic or your thumbnail image like okay right here here's a guy's face okay handsome looking young man he's got a smile on his face big lettering and this is a good graphic uh, image for a thumbnail okay now let me just show you something this is can stock photo I go here often you can put a search term in like girl's face that's what I did when I got that girl's face that I just showed you um, and then you can either do search for photos all images illustrations even videos um, but you would want to click on <clears throat> I'm sure photos right there type in girls face to a search they have over 40 get this 40 million images in their index here you don't have to look through them all but there are actually over 14,000 images of girls faces just scroll through the first few pages you can find something okay that's where I get a lot of my images from now this is render forest okay I go here sometimes let me just show you something first this is one of their video files which you can buy
Okay, so this is cool. You can use it for free, but if you do, this render forest watermark is going to come up, and that's not cool. So you can buy these um, and pay for them. Bad news is they cost $20, $30 a piece probably, something like that. But then what you could do is you could come back here and take this. And when it gets about that far, you could use ScreenFlow, and I'll show you how. You could add some text up here, your name, the title of the video, whatever. Okay, so I'm just showing you that because it got some cool stuff in there. Okay, let's minimize this. Let's look at the thumbnail again. I'm going to show you exactly how you could create something like this. I use Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use a thing called GIMP. It is a lot like Photoshop. It doesn't do everything, but it does enough to do things like this. Okay, so what I want to do is come up and click on Create New right here. And I size this to 1280 by 720 pixels. I'll click on Create and my work area comes up. I'm going to hit command minus, that makes it a little smaller. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is come over here, these clouds, this cloud image, I got this at Canstock Photo. Okay, $2.50. I'm going to drag it over like this, click on the, air, the check mark to place it, and then I'll do the same thing with this girl's image. I'll drag her in there. I'm going to move her down just a little bit so we can see her better. Click on the check to place it. Okay, and she's right there. Now, I want to make sure I'm on this layer. These are all the different layers. The girl's head. I want to make sure I'm on that. And then I want to come to Layer, and I want to come down to Rasterize. This smart object. It's a smart object right now. We're going to pixelate it. And now it's rasterized. You need to do that. Up here, I'm going to take my Quick Select tool, just go over her face, her shoulders, like that. And then I'm going to come up to Edit. I'm going to go down to Stroke. You can pick any color stroke you want, but I like white. So I've got white picked up here. Click OK. Um, I'm going to make a 10 pixel line. You can make it any width you want. The color is white now. Watch what happens when I click OK. There we go. And uh, now I'm going to take this and change it to my magic wand tool. I'll just click up here to get those lines out of there. Now with my magic wand tool, I'm going to click, it doesn't matter where, any place in the black. It selects all the black. I hit delete right there and see what it did? It made a white line around her. I'm going to take my move tool right up here and I'm going to move her down right into the corner and that's how I got that girl's image with the white line around it. Okay. Now the next thing is I'm going to come down here and let's down here, this is the foreground and background colors. I'm going to pick a foreground color that's a bright red. Okay. And then for the background color, I'm going to use this bright yellow. Okay. Now what I'll do is take my text tool and I'm going to come right up here. I can't remember what the title said, but let's make it say push caps down making cool making cool thumbnails okay again I'll take my move tool and what I'm going to do is first I'm going to widen this out I'm going to drag it and make it longer like that and then I'll drag it down so it's a little taller like that okay very good now I need to make sure right now let me just get apply. I'm sorry. I should have clicked this here. This I should have clicked this check mark that places the text. Okay. Now the next thing is make sure that you're on this making cool thumbnails. Make sure you're on that layer, and then come up to layer, go to layer style, blending options, and let's watch this. What I'm going to do is remember I've got red and yellow, the foreground and background colors. So what I'm going to do first is put a stroke around that. See it made a black line around it. That looks good. Then I'm going to come down to gradient overlay and see what it did. It went from red to yellow just like that for me. Now if I double click on this you can see that I can change Whoops, you can change how much red you have and how much. That looks pretty good right there. So I'll click on that. I'll click on OK that's how I got that. Now, oh, one other thing I should probably do while I was in there, um, layer style, blending options. Um, 
One other thing I would do is down at the bottom it says drop shadow. Watch what happens. See it put a drop shadow under there. It makes it stand out even more. So that looks pretty good. Then at the bottom um, I think I had my name. So I could type in Mike Mike McMillan, and I want to drag this out a little so it fits in there. Okay, let me get my move tool up here. I'm going to move this over, and I'm also going to drag this down to make it taller, just like that. Okay, make sure I'm on Mike McMillan, that layer. Again, we'll come into, uh, oh, I've got to place that. Click on this, that places it. Okay, now I'll come down to layer, layer style, and uh, we'll go to blending options. Again, I'm going to put a stroke on that, and I'm not going to put any fancy shading, but I will put a drop shadow on there. It makes it stand out just like that. Okay. Oh, I clicked on cancel. Shoot, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I can be such a dummy. <laughs> okay, I want to put a stroke on there, and I want to put a drop shadow on it. I need to click on OK. All right. So, um, yeah. I've got that. I'm not going to do this other part, but all I did for that center region, I took my box tool and I dragged it across here and I used a, let me click on the color picker here. I think I used a very light blue color like that. Okay, and uh, so I had that. Now I need to drag this down so that it's underneath the girl's head. I want it to be under the girl's head like that. Okay, see how I did that? Whoops, see how I did that? And then, um, yeah, I can click on that to get off. And I had some, I don't remember what it said in here. It said something in here, but you could add that just like I added this text or this text. And that's how I made that thumbnail. And then to save this, um, you can do a save as like this. And hopefully something will come up. And I would call this, um, I could just call it head right there and save it as a PNG file, just like that. Okay, and I can do a save, and it, uh, it will save that for me on my desktop. Okay, so that's how I made that thumbnail, and you could do something exactly like that, make a really, really cool thumbnail. So let me close this down. I'm not going to save the changes to that, but someplace on my uh, messy, messy desktop, I should have a thing that says head, and uh, right here. And that's the thumbnail that I could use, okay? Okay, well, let's have some fun. Let's do some green screen effects. Uh, they're easy to do, and you can make some really cool uh, looking videos. So right now, this is me. I'm just talking, I have a white background. I've disabled the sound. This is how I shoot some of my videos, just like this. But with green screen effects, you can put anything behind you, make it look like you're standing behind this wooden wall. I'm not. Right here, you can make it look like there's an ocean scene or any video clip you have or you want. You can make it look like you're standing there. To do a green screen effect, you need a green screen. I spent about $7 at a, um, let me go back here and you can see this. I spent about $7 on this green screen fabric. Um, it's just, it's not green screen fabric. It's just green screen I bought at the store. Um, and this is kind of stretchy and that helps a lot because what I did is I came in here and I got some gaffer tape, G-A-F-F-E-R. They use it on sets and movies and things for different things. Um, but it peels off your wall if you decide to go this route a lot easier than duct tape or something like that. So I just taped this, I stretched it out a little, taped it on the wall. And then when I come in here, this is me talking with the green screen behind me. Okay, nothing magical yet. I'm just talking with the green screen behind me. But to make this work, the key is to have proper lighting. And you can see right here, I've put the green screen back here. About 10 feet away, I have my camera, uh, my video camera right here, and I'm standing about six feet from the screen. These lights back here, what you want, I have these 36 inches out from the wall and about 45 inches from the center line. The idea is they hit your green screen and they bounce off here. This hits your green screen and it bounces off here. You cannot stand back here where the lighting is hitting you because what will happen is it will hit the green screen, it will come back and hit behind you, and you'll have a green halo around your head, body, whatever's in there. So you need to stand out a little ways. Okay, so that's how you set this up. Now, 
how you green screen this. Well, let's take this green screen clip and I'm going to move it right over here. Again, this is me talking with the green screen. Okay, nothing magical yet. I'm going to take this image of the wall. Okay, remember, it's just an image. It's a photograph of a wall like that. I got this at Canstock Photo, by the way, too. And I'm going to move it over here. And it's important, I don't, if I put this up on top, let me move my scrubber bar over here. If I put this on top, all you see is the wall because it's on the top of my timeline. You need to take the image you want to use and put it down below. Okay, so right now we can't see that image, but I'm going to show you how to make that happen. Okay, so you click on your video clip of you talking in front of the green screen. You click on the video icon, click on video filters, click on chroma key right there, click on add. Okay, now look what's happened. It looks like I disappeared. I didn't. But when you click on this right here, this color picker, it's on gray. I don't want it on gray. Look what happens though. As I move this around, remember I'm using a green screen. And as I move this around and get up into the green area, look what happens. When I get way up here into the green area, it made that green transparent. Okay, it made it transparent. So now when I play this video, it looks like I'm standing in front of that wooden wall. And I'm really not. I'm standing in front of a white wall. You can do exactly the same thing with a video clip. Again, I got this video clip at Canstock Photo. I'm going to drag this in here and you'll see exactly the same thing. It looks like I'm standing in front of that ocean clip. I'm not. I'm standing in front of a white wall. But with green screen effects, you can make it look like you're standing in front of anything that you want. So that's kind of a cool effect. Okay, try it out. I think you'll like it. Okay. Okay, well, let's have some fun. Okay, in this section. And we're going to talk about um, how to import video that you've shot into ScreenFlow, uh, how to import images, and how to use text to jazz up uh, any videos that you've got in here. So I opened up a new ScreenFlow document right here. You can see that. And what I'm going to do is these are all the tools, remember, that you can use in ScreenFlow. And I'm going to click on my media library right there. There's nothing in it. It's empty. So I'll come over here. And this is an MP4 file. I shot this with my video camera or DSLR camera. I don't know what I shot. I shot it with something. And uh, it was actually a much longer video. But uh, that's just like a 10 second clip. Here's an image of a a guy talking into a microphone. We'll use these as our examples. Okay, right there. So the first thing I'll do is just take this video clip I've got and drag it down into my timeline anywhere. Okay, and when I do this, if I move my scrubber bar over here and play this, by the way, I'm going to hit Command minus. That's every time you do that, it squeezes your work area down. Um, and I like to be able to see the whole thing like that. So let's play this just for a second. I've got some black in the beginning. And then well, right here, that's where the video starts. This is a poor quality video, sorry, but we'll use it for an example. So what I'll do is come down and click on the clip and hit T. That splits the clip. I showed you that before. And then I'll hit delete and take out that intro, that black part in the beginning. So now when this plays, I'll tell you up front here, uh, it starts right in with me talking. And wacky clothing and tries to be hip and cool, you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not hip and I'm not cool, but I've been in this business for about 20 years. It Okay, so there's my video clip. Now, once you bring in a video clip, however you, you know, with the DSLR camera, webcam, uh, um, video camera, whatever you shot, iPhone, you know, whatever you shot this with, you can bring it in just like this. Okay, and again, this is not a great quality video, but I just grabbed it quickly. So once you do that, you can come up here to, uh, and by the way, when you've got a clip in here like this, you can click on this. You can move it around any way you'd like to. You can resize it. Just grab a corner, make it as big or as small as you'd like to, but we'll keep it right there for now. Um, but you can come into this video section right here, video tools. Okay, Click on your clip. And once you've done that, there are all kinds of things you can do. You can play with the X, Y, Z rotations. Um, 
you know, let me get this back to where it was. Whoops, there. Um, and you can rotate it in different ways, uh, change the opacity of it. Uh, but down at color controls, <clears throat> with any video you bring in or any image you bring in, you can do this. You can change the saturation. That's way too much mic there. <laughs> but, you know, maybe I'll keep it like that. And you can change the brightness um, and get it. Because you may not have perfect lighting. And this will let you adjust uh, the video clip. Play with the contrast. Um, you know, I'll just kind of leave it right there. Um, but you can do all those things. And then you can also, there's a rotation bar right here. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to rotate this, but you can do that if you want to. And then down under video filters right here, um, what you can do, there are a number of video filters, and click on the plus sign right here, and you can do any of these things in here. Now, I usually, I don't play with hardly any of these except the color adjustment and maybe the chroma key. But, okay, well, let me break into the video because I just want to add a comment here um, really quick because it fits in right here. If you're watching this video, see how small this action or this uh, text is up here. It's very small and maybe hard for you to read. It depends on you know how big you've got it on your on your computer. But one thing you can do in cases like this is you can come in here, move your scrubber bar wherever you want to, and then come up here and there's a thing right here. It's it's a call out that arrow, and what you can do is click on your clip right there click on action okay it tells about it right there and then you can come up here and um, the way I have this right now it's it's a round thing I like to use the freehand uh, tool and come up here to that rectangle tool and then whatever you want people to see draw a box around it right there okay and I'll close this down and where it says zoom up see what that does you can make this bigger so now it shows up and people can see it better and you can make this call out go for as long as you want you can stretch it out we'll just let's just let this play so you can see what happens okay we're getting close to the yellow call out when we get to the yellow see what happened okay and you could show them what you're doing and then let me move my scrubber bar. When you get to the end of the call out, it goes back to the regular size. So call outs can be very helpful, especially when you're doing screencasts, to draw attention to things that are very small. You can change any of these things, like you can do a gamma adjust, click on add, and then you can come in here and you can play with the gamma adjust. You know, I might. I might up it a little, you know, like that, whatever. Um, another thing you can do is you can come in, click on the video filter thing again, and go to, um, let's see, color adjustment. This time, let's do a hue adjust. Now, if you have poor lighting, <clears throat> this is something you might want to play with because with a hue adjust, see, you can go to more green. I mean, that's way too much green, and that's way too much red, but you can play with the colors. Um, in this case, I might, you know, come in and that's too much green right there, but I could come down, try to get the green out and have it a little more natural. Okay, maybe something like that. You know, I could get it better, but you can play with all those different filters and get your image, um, you know, the way that you'd like to. Okay, now you've got a video clip in here, and sometimes, remember I showed you how you could split that if you'd like to. Um, another thing you can do is um, right here I generally take my uh, video clip and if you use a DSLR camera, a video camera or something it sort of mashes the the video and the audio uh, parts of your clip together and what I usually do is come up here to edit to detach audio and see what it did let me move this out of the way I separated the audio and video parts of the file so now when I play this that's the video, but there's no audio. And over here, Be hip and cool. you know what I mean? that's the video, but there's no, or that's the audio, but there's no video. We want to keep them synced up and lined up just like that, though. Um, but with your audio down here, if you click on this, this uh, is about as loud as I would like it to be. But if it's not, if it's too loud or not loud enough, you can play up here 
with, see if I move this volume down, I can move it way down, and now, see it's 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 not loud at all you can go up to 190 percent you can actually go above 190 percent if you type in like 300 um, the slider bar won't go up that high but you can type in anything you want um, the problem with that is look at all the red peaks I've got this is way too loud clothing and tries to be hip okay that's way way too loud so um, you can play with this though and I like to have the wave file on my audio uh, down something like that and cool. you know what I mean. okay so you can always play with the audio if you uh, if you would like to okay so um, the next thing let's come in and let me just show you a couple effects you can do with your video um, right here a lot of times what people will do is take their video say right here and see this is see this gray I, I needed to make it more white so what I'll do is again come into uh, this section right here and uh, I need to make it brighter so take that gray out of there you know something like that and then I'm talking down here and if you had a screencast going in the background you could be showing your computer keyboard while you're doing something and you could be explaining it um, down here Another thing you can do with audio is you could take a video clip you have and if you want to bring it in you could do something like this make it very small right here okay and um, up here see the stopwatch I guess is what it is you could click on this for video motion click on action it tells about it um, but what you can do is let me use my magnifying glass and make my uh, these clips show up a little better let me get them over in the middle I'll drag them over here okay and this right here this purple is the video action I'm gonna drag it over to the beginning and once you get it in there you can drag it and make it bigger or smaller I'll show you what that does but um, the idea is what you can do is start come to the start and what I'll do is drag this over off the screen and I'll move my slider bar all the way to the beginning okay and at the beginning I want myself this little mini me mic right here I want to be off the screen then you move your slider bar to the end of the video action and put it where you're gonna to want to have it after the action is done so like I could make it bigger and put it in like right here and now let's see with this video action let's see what happens ready let's go I'll tell you up front here uh, I'm not one of those guys that comes out and dresses in wacky clothing and tries to be hit. okay see what that did we use that video action to bring in you know my face <laughs> You, from down here, in the uh, corner okay if I was gonna do this that's a little too slow I would squeeze this down so it's probably more like this and make it shorter that'll make it all happen faster I'll tell you up front here uh, I'm not one of those guys okay, bring in a transition like that so it looks something like that um, one other thing I don't know if you can see this there's a little bit of because I didn't have perfect lighting there's a little bit of a line here uh, my lighting wasn't bright enough down there so one thing you can do is if you ever run into that you probably will um, you can push control on your Mac keyboard and then this doesn't resize it it crops it when you hit control keep the control push down and now see I took that out I took most of it out that's good enough and end up with um, something like that okay so uh, something else we can do is um, we can use well let's put some text in here okay suppose I'm talking and uh, let's get I'll take that transition or that animate video action out of there I'll just click it out and I'll drag myself back in here and let's make it you know something like this okay and um, so I'm right there now if you want to put text in you need to come up and grab this text tool right here click on the plus sign and see that gives you a, a text block 
right there. Now your text block, when you drag it in, it's going to have a backdrop. It's going to have this black color behind it. I don't like the backdrop effect. So I take that out. Now it looks like everything disappeared, but it really didn't. See my text is still there. It's just white. So I would need to come into this color picker and I can pick any color I want. Green. I'm not sure that green is, you know, exactly the color I'd want, but you know, I could use this mocha color, whatever. Pick any color you'd like. Let's let's go with a blackish color. Okay? So you can make the text any color you like. And then once you get some text in here, you could come up and you can change to any font you'd like in there. Okay, and you can change the size if you like. Just pick one of these other sizes. And then you can also down here, kerning is, is the spacing between letters in your text. If you use this first kerning tool, see how it makes the text tighter? You may want to use that sometime, or you can space it out, increase the kerning, you know, do something like that. Um, but that's how you can play with text. And you can grab this, you can move your text around, you know, any place you'd like to, whatever you want to say. And then, excuse me, <laughs> and then uh, another thing that you can do is use what we call um, animations. And, uh, well, we just did an animation, but you can also use animations with text. So, for example, I could put my text out here use the animations, the video action animations, and I could again do this, and um, so here is, let me stretch this out a little bit more, here is my video action right here, this yellow thing, and I can come in here, click on that, I'll make it a little wider, maybe something like this, and again we can go to the start, and I want my text to start out here, and then at the end of the animation, I want it to slide in, you know, wherever you want it to slide into. So that then when this plays, you can watch. Guys, it comes out and dresses in wacky clothing. And okay, see, I'll click and get that line out of there again. One of those guys that comes out and dresses in wacky clothing. So you clothing. can do the same thing with text that we did with video, and you can do the same thing with images. Um, so, yeah. And another thing you can do is... Let me, uh, let's just take the, this whole text out of there. Um, suppose that I'm coming in and, and uh, let's, I'm just going to cut this clip. It doesn't matter where. I hit T, that cuts the clip. Now I've got two clips. So suppose you're talking over here and then you start talking on a different topic. And I'm not doing that, but just to show you, um, you can see we split the clip right here. So you could come in to this part of the clip and you can use what we call a transition and just scroll down uh, by the way see the little gear box okay just scroll down add starting transition okay now what that does is instead of having it just go from here right into here with the starting transition let's see what happens nice to be hip and cool. okay see how that uh, transition made it fade from one scene to another it tries to be hip and Cool. And see, in addition to that, I could take this second clip and I could make it bigger and say move to the middle like this, and I'll still have that starting transition. So let's come back and see what happens here. And it tries to be hip and cool. See, you could move it around a little bit just to break things up. Um, and that's how you could do that. Now, I can just, uh, I'm just going to take all of this out of here. And I also, in my video library, I brought in this image of this guy right here. And again, you can do the same thing. You can resize this uh, any way you want to. You can use the video color controls. It's not a video, it's a clip. But still, you could change the contrast, the brightness, anything like that. You can still, you know, uh, move them around and resize them. But um, what you could do right here um, is the same thing that we did with the video clip. Um, you can change the color, all that stuff. But right here, suppose you're talking about microphones, okay, in your video clip. You could come up here to this annotations tool, the pencil, <coughs> okay? And then what you'd want to do is um, click on the clip right here, okay? And then click on this plus sign, and now you can use any of these annotations. This makes a line or an arrow, a box, a box outline, a circle. This is a freehand tool. Um, you know, 
something like that. Um, I'll take that out. But um, for example, you could use the line tool, and then you can come down here under endpoints and pick like an arrow looking thing. And then you could just come in and if you want to point something out, maybe you want to point that microphone out, you know, you could drag an arrow tool in there. I use that a lot. Um, you can also use boxes. If, if you've got a bunch of text and you're doing a screencast, you could use this, uh, this tool right here and you could make a box uh, to highlight portion of the text or whatever you've got up there. We won't do that. But those are some of the things that you can do with um, whether it's videos or images or you know audio files, some of the ways you can play around with those to jazz up um, your video file and, and make it look a little cooler. Okay? Good. Okay, well here's something really handy. Uh, I think this is new in ScreenFlow 8. Maybe they had it in 7. I don't think so, but it's in 8. And this is a function in ScreenFlow that lets you record directly from your iPhone or iPad, any iOS device, directly into ScreenFlow. It dumps the recording right into ScreenFlow live. Um, and it saves you having to, you know, find it, you know, uh, import it into your document, all that stuff. So it makes it real easy. So here's all you need right here. This is my iPhone. You have to have it unlocked. And you can go to... Uh, your video camera and the big thing you can't have it on photo or anything else you have to have it set on video this is set on video right now okay and then the only other thing that you need to do is to take your power cable what you charge your iPhone with okay and this is the end that you would plug into your iPhone I'll plug it in right here but instead of charging it using it to charge we'll pull the plug off the end and that's a USB type connector right there. And what we'll do is, I'm going to turn my Mac sideways. I hope you can see this. And I have a uh, Blue Snowball mic hooked up. This is my other monitor. But I have a free USB port. So I plug it in right there. And once I do that, and I have it plugged in, just like this, okay, then I can come in here and as soon as I hit record, everything that my iPhone records will start recording into ScreenFlow for me. So let me show you how that works, okay? So once you have your iPhone all wired up into your computer, um, what you can do is come up to ScreenFlow and go to New right there. And this time we're going to do something a little different. Instead of using the color LCD or monitor um, to record with, we will record, click on this and unclick this, record iOS device. See where it says iPhone? It recognizes my iPhone. Um, and I will still record with my blue snowball mic. So if I come down here and click on this, my camera's shutting off. I'm sorry about the beeping. If I click on this and start recording, then uh, it will start recording from my, anything that shows up on my iPhone screen will uh, uh, be dumped right into ScreenFlow. So I'm already recording, so I'm not going to click on this again. But um, what I'm going to do is set my iPhone up on a tripod right over my shoulder, and we'll record something, and then I'll show you how it put it right into ScreenFlow. Okay? Okay, so I have my iPhone set up on a tripod uh, right behind me. And I just and it's I've got it wired right into my computer like I showed you with that cable. By the way, if you need a longer cable, these cables are only like three feet long. These charger cables, you can get some up to twelve feet long on Amazon for fifteen dollars if you need a longer cable. Anyway, okay, I want to show you this uh, just so we've got a clip to work with. This is something my little grandson made me, and uh, he brought this to me a couple two three months ago. And he was so happy to give it to me. And I love this. I'm going to keep it forever. So, okay, this is a clip we can use. Now I'm going to go back into my computer, okay? Now, as soon as I stop my screen flow recording, this box appears. It asks, do I want to create a new document or add this clip to an existing document? I'll create a new document, okay? Okay, so as soon as I've done that, this page pops up, and here is my recording in ScreenFlow. And what this is, is 
it's what I shot on my iPhone showing you this little plate my grandson made and uh, you can see it's recorded I've turned the sound way down so I can talk over it but here is the audio clip okay the waveform of the audio and here is the video part down here and it's recorded directly from my iPhone into ScreenFlow so that's how you can do that that's a good thing to learn how to do okay good okay here's a quick tip I want to show you something from an earlier video I put together um, and this is just some stuff and I used annotations to highlight different parts of this image up here in different colors the problem is it took me one two three four five six seven eight different clips or annotations to make this work so with my cursor I can highlight all eight of those parts and come up to edit nest clips and it collapses all of those clips down into just one and it still works exactly the same step by step okay so it can clean up your timeline quite a bit now you can always come back to edit and unnest clips and be right back where you started okay so that's a cool tip you might want to use that someday okay good okay here is something new in ScreenFlow 8 and they call it styles let me show you how this works um, first I'll click on this crop tool and you can see I have a blue background. You know how you could change? I should change background colors and things. Okay. I have a blue background set, so I'll click on that. You can't see my background because my video clip is in the way. Okay, but if I move it out. So there is a blue background back there. Okay, so let me show you how styles works. I'm going to come in here. Oh, and I have some text over here. Um, this text will not show up because of the white background, but I'll show you what we'll do with that. I'm going to come in here any place right here I'm going to go to video create a video action there's my video action that yellow thing right there okay I'll move it over here and remember how video actions work at the start I want to be right here at the end of this video action I want ScreenFlow to do four things for me maybe it's three we'll see <laughs> but I want ScreenFlow to take me and shrink me down like that then I want ScreenFlow to move me up like that and then I want ScreenFlow to move me over about like that and then I want ScreenFlow to use this Y rotation see I can rotate myself either way and I'm gonna rotate like this okay and then I'll come up to this cube this is a style cube I click on the plus sign these are the five things that I told ScreenFlow to do it remembers those things okay and so I click on this again and I can name this I'll just call it move hit return and it saves that okay so let's watch the clip come back here as soon as it hits that style it moves it over for me just like that and then my text pops up all right so that's kind of a handy thing to have now the big thing is if you have a different video clip or a different uh, document set up same thing that's a different shirt, a different background. It's a whole new me, okay, right here. So this is a different clip. It could be a different uh, document. But again, I'll come in here. I'll click on I'll click on my image or my video. I'll click on the video property. Click on um, let's see. Oh, action. I want to make a video action. So here it is, and I'll drag this over and make it look something like this. That's a video action. Now rather than play with all these numbers and move myself around and everything like I did first time it remembers that thing called move that I did in the first clip so if I click on this it remembers that so now if I come down here watch what happens it remembers how I moved my first video file and it does exactly the same thing again which is extremely useful because okay it's extremely useful because you can save that and use that same action in video after video after video if you'd like and it doesn't have to be the same uh, image or video file it can be any video file in there so it makes it extremely useful and a huge time saver okay good let's take a look at one more new function that ScreenFlow 8 has incorporated and this is called templates okay so let me show you how this works to begin with I've opened up a new ScreenFlow document right here okay and the first thing I'll do is come up to insert insert a template placeholder clip 
All right, just like this, I'll insert it. Now, this makes me dizzy to look at, <laughs> okay, but uh, I'll show you what this does. Over here, I have a little 10 second clip. It's actually 11 seconds, it says, okay. And it's a video clip I made some time ago. <clears throat> and what I'll do is drag this down into my timeline right here, okay? And I'll take my magnifying glass down here and shrink the size of these down so you can see both of these. And what I'll do is drag that down below my video clip. So now you can see me and see right behind me is that placeholder clip right there, okay? This is a short 11 second video clip I made that I could put at the start of any one of my YouTube videos, okay? And it's generic in that it doesn't name the video. It just says, hey, I'm Mike, you know, welcome, stuff like that. Let me play this for you. Hi, and welcome to Mike McMillan's Info Product Earnings YouTube channel. Okay, so see, I could put that at the beginning of any video just to get their attention and get them cued into, you know, who I am and what we're going to do here, okay? So once I've done this, I'm going to come up to File and not do a Save, not do a Save As, but save this as a template. And they'll ask me to name it, and I'll name this Introduction. Okay? So now I've saved this as a template. I don't need this recording anymore because ScreenFlow has saved that inside of ScreenFlow as a template. So I'll close this down and we'll start with a new recording. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so let's um, pretend we're gonna you're gonna make a new recording. Okay, a, a new video, whatever. So I come down to ScreenFlow. Okay. So let's pretend we're gonna make a new recording, a YouTube video, something like that. Okay. So um, normally in in this case, what we do is come down under File and go to New. Okay. Now typically, what I've done in the past, I would create a new document okay and start recording something but this time instead of doing that we'll come down to where it says new from template because we've created a template and we want to use that so then you come over and just record the your Mac monitor and I'm using the blue snow mall bank okay so then um, after that what we would do is we would come down here and click on new from template and here's the template that we just made okay this is the template we just made so we'd click on this little icon down here and once you click on that icon then this screen comes up but remember when I created that placeholder clip I clicked on screen recording and computer audio okay which means that after that placeholder clip plays it's going to start recording what's on my screen now if I wanted to shoot a live video and have that come up after my placeholder then uh, then uh, I could have clicked on the camera and microphone. If I wanted to record, you know, a video using my uh, iPhone or iPad, I could have clicked on this. But since I set, set it up this way, as soon as it's done playing my template, it'll start recording what's on my screen, okay? So again, I would come down, click on the recording button, and what's gonna happen is my template will play, and right after that, it will start recording whatever's on my screen okay okay so as soon as I click on record it records whatever's on my screen and what's on my screen right now is just a page from one of my booklets I'm talking about it showing some of my students how some things work and it's recording this for me okay so I'll stop this recording Okay, so as soon as the template is done playing, the intro, it goes right to my screen recording right here, and that's how that works. Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for watching my video, and let's stay long distance friends. Leave me a comment or a question below. Keep in touch on YouTube. And don't forget to grab the free supplemental ebook I offered you earlier. It'll be a big help. Click on the link in the description below this video. And as always, Please, my very, very sincerest wishes for tremendous success with all your online activities.